Welcome to part five. So in part three, you saw me affix these two pieces together with the four bolts. But now I'm going to drill and tap four more holes and I will have four countersunk screws hold the two pieces of aluminum together once I have all four cut out from each other. Now, in order to do my through hole and my drill and tapped hole, I want to scribe a mark in the areas where I'm going to be drilling the four holes. But with these bolts in the way, that presents a little bit of a problem. But a simple solution is to just take <clears throat> one loose at a time. And the reason I am making a scribe mark and drilling through from the thinner piece of material is because once it's in the vise, I'm gonna, once again, take the thinner piece of material off after do the through hole through both pieces and leave the thicker piece in the vise. That way, everything's in the same setting and I can set up my, my tap and my holder my, that centers up the tap in the drill truck and, and tap through the thicker piece of material while it's in the vise. So that's why I'm going through from this side rather than just flip it over and have it in the vise and it can sit flat on this side because I don't want to go through the thicker piece. I want to go through the thinner piece first. So taking a measurement from the end of the piece to the scribe line, it's going to be 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to want to split the difference. That's going to be 5 sixteenths halfway in and then also my scribe line from the top of the material down goes 5 eighths of an inch. So I'll just set the square up for 5 sixteenths of an inch and then hold it against this side and hold against this side. Scribe two marks, center punch the center of the two marks and that will be the first hole to do. So we have about 7 sixteenths sticking out past, this, past the end of the square. So we're gonna once again hide just barely hide the 5 sixteenths mark on the 6 inch scale and we'll tighten it up there. And just touch the square toward to the end of my material. I'll grab my scribe. And a bunch of little stuff all the way around here, but if we lay it out just right, There's the first line. Get these screws over here so I don't kick them off to the side and down in, in, down in, a, in a tight space. Because sometimes you have little stuff around, you kick it around, that it just wants to jump into the tightest spaces. That then you got to go get a magnet. Just to beat them out of there. Okay, holding the square down tight against the material. Do a second mark, just second pass on the mark, and there we go. So now I can center punch in the center of the two scrapped lines. And with your center punch, you can get a feel for it when you're right at the crossroads of those two marks. Give it a tap. That looks good. I might go again, try to angle it towards uh, this direction. I'll go with that. Because as long as you have two bolts holding two pieces together, I'll scribe another line. Inch and a quarter from the end, because from the end to here, it's gonna be inch and a quarter. And then I'll cut seven or three quarters in half, 750 thousandths. 3 eighths. So I'll go inch and a quarter plus 3 eighths in, and that'll get me to my center line I'm looking for right here up and down. Holding it down flat. There's our scribe mark. Let that make some more sense. Here we go. Perfect. Go one more just for good measure.
Scribe our mark and Bob's your uncle. That's gonna put us right there. Perfect. There's one. And there's two. All four center punch marks laid out. And now we'll put it back in the vise and we'll do our thing. Now we'll take a look at the four screws we're gonna be using to secure all four of our pieces together. Unfortunately, I don't have four of the same size, so I just have to make do with literally only four countersunk screws that I can find in my toolbox. And they're gonna be like this, that way they'll sit flush into each piece, and they won't be sticking out, and they'll, it'll look nicer, it'll clean up. So for example, when you're sizing up for what drill bit you need, I have this first piece here in the caliper, and I'm grabbing by the threads, and what I get is just under 200 thousandths. And if I line it up with the, it looks like the number, number 18 line right there, just, just below the 20, it lines up with the top mark there. So it comes out to be your, your zero line is, tells you where you're starting to look at first. So you're looking just between 175 thousandths and less than 200 thousandths. So that's where you're, you go off the zero line first, and then you come over here, and you see between zero and 25, which one of those lines matches up with any top line. So it's gonna be the number 18 line. So we have 175 thousandths plus 18 thousandths, and that's what, what's gonna give us the actual thickness of our piece that we're measuring here. I don't have a digital caliper making do with the Craftsman, so 175 thousandths plus 18 thousandths will net you, or you could just go seven down from 200 thousandths. That'll be 193 thousandths. So this will actually be a five millimeter screw. Five millimeters though is 196 thousandths. So wh whichever factory machine this one went just either a little undersized or my calipers aren't measuring right on the money. Either way, we'll assume it's five millimeter. And I also, when I check the pitch, I have a metric pitch gauge and a standard pitch gauge. Now what's interesting about this screw in particular is that when you go to put your pitch gauge on it, one millimeter pitch, which is just one millimeter in between each of the threads, you can see it's not, I can't make it sit down in the valley of the threads. So it's actually 0.8 millimeters between each thread. If I show you right here, you can see that the 0.8 millimeter thread pitch gauge sits down the valley of the threads on this screw. What's interesting though, is if I pull out on my standard thread pitch gauge, if I pull out 32 threads per inch, it also lines up like also right in the money, it sits down the valley just as well as 0.8 millimeters. So how could you know which one you're dealing with? Well, like we already did, we measured the thickness of the screw. And if you look on the chart for, 30, for any um, 32 sizes, we have 1032, and then even smaller, we have 832. But 1224 and 1228 are about 3 16ths of an inch. Which if you look at 3 16ths, that's 187 thousandths, which is less. We already measured with the caliper of our screw, it's 193 thousandths. And it, so it definitely can't be thin, 1032, because that'd be even smaller of a thickness of a screw. And it cannot be 832, because that'd be t a tiny thickness of a screw. And there's even 6-32. And because this one 
on the top side of it takes an Allen key to tighten it. I actually have two standard size Allen keys and you'll notice that the hex will only accept one Allen key and it's only gonna accept one Allen key from either a metric, stand, uh, metric set Allen pack or a standard Allen pack, which my Allen pack here is the standard set. My metric one's at home for working on cars. You can see actually machined an aluminum Allen pack for, to hold my standard size Allen keys. So the next size up in the standard set it, it doesn't, it's too big, it's slightly too big. And the next size down is too small, there's too much play. So that's another way you can figure out if you're dealing with metric screw or a standard screw, but only if you have the Allen key hex on the top side for tightening it down. And then our other two screws here, these are probably standard thread. <laughs> it's probably smaller than quarter 20 for sure so we're going to go down to, to 1224 or 1228 because it looks like it could be about the same size as five millimeter just a hair smaller but not quite all the way down to 1032 because that's a smaller thickness screw so I'm gonna look at 24, and would you look at that? It's gonna be 12, 24, and I'll get the appropriate drill for that based off the chart you see here on the screen. And for my five millimeter screw, M5 by 0.8, I will actually be using, it calls for a drill bit that is 165 thousandths thick. And then the small screw is a eight by 32 screw. So I found the tap for that here. And the corresponding drill is actually a number 29, but the drill in that slot is not the right size. It's actually more like 144 thousandths, which is a 27. So I think you just have a second 27. I got this drill on next used and handed down to me. So I actually need 136 thousandths of an inch drill bit. But since I don't have that, I'm gonna step up to 140 thousandths number 28 drill bit because I'm using such a small tap it'll be a little bit better so I don't I have less chance of breaking that tap I am only going through aluminum but for this purpose I'm just securing two pieces of aluminum together and it's not for anything that needs to hold two pieces at such a high amount of force so this should be fine for this this purpose Two screws back in for a total of four. Hold the piece down on my parallels. Okay. And you've seen this bit before. Countersink to line up with the center punch, mark, center punch marks. And then we'll get, get to it with the drilling. Make sure the table's unlocked before moving it. Good there, so we'll lock the table in both positions.
lift the top piece off without shifting the bottom piece. And then we'll tighten back up. I like to put some tension on the vise with the vise handle before I push down on my piece. That way I know I'm not gonna shift it by when I'm pushing down on it by accident. Now I'll run the countersink down. Where was the tool I was looking for? It was right here in front of me. Butterfinger, I've been having butterfingers this week. That is not good. Especially if you drop some that get, get damaged or cracked. I don't know what's been going on with me. But we'll tighten this guy up. Lay out some cutting fluid on our M5 by 0.8 tap. And for this, we'll have to crank the table down. Bring the quill down. And you know what time it is. It's time for the crescent wrench. Let's get it. Putting tension in the coil as we feed the tap into the thicker piece of aluminum. And once we get these four tap holes done, then I can put my countersink screws into the four new tap holes, and then we can cut our aluminum pieces in the fours, and then we can mill out the dead zone sections that we had bolted together in part three. And we'll get closer to completion. Should be able to spin it out by hand. A little tight at certain spots because of all the chips built up in the tap. Because it is only M5 by 0.8 after all. We'll blow the chips out. I have to turn on the air compressor. Get some more air pressure in the line, but we'll take our M5 by 0.8 screw. We'll uh, give it the old test, and would you look at that? Threads in beautifully. Feels good. Actually, always, always think twice. I can't do that. The top piece is so thin that if I go deep enough in, with the countersink into it, it'll actually start the countersink the bottom thicker piece with my tapped hole. And of course, I don't want that. I've already countersunk it enough. So I will just have to take the bottom piece out and only grab the top piece in the vise with the through holes. And I'll use that trick I showed you in part three, where I line the piece up on the side to side with the countersink, and I'll hold it there, put some tension on it as I tighten the vise handle to tighten the piece in the vise. Good. Okay, so next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start countersinking my hole here. And as I countersink it, I'll take the countersink, push it up, pull it back up, and I'll test fit my screw until I get to the point where the screw isn't sticking up out of the piece, it's actually all the way flush into the piece. But before I do that, just realized I got to do my through hole in my top piece. So like I said, the screw is 193,006. I'm going to get a drill that's 193 or just slightly over so that I have a through hole before I can do my countersunk hole. The side of the countersink is super close to touching this uh, back jaw, so I'm not sure if it's going to end up hitting. So what I'm going to want to do is actually get my other parallels to raise this piece up to sit up higher. That way I don't run into a clearance issue. So looking at it closer again, it should actually just barely clear, so we're going to find out. Ooh, that's very, very close. If that picks up on camera, that's almost almost flush in there. I just got to go just a little bit more. And I actually have to poke it through from the back side. It 
It's just you gotta keep going and keep checking. And there we go. So now I can see just the outline of the countersunk hole around the screw. When I run my finger over, it goes just right over the screw, the head of the screw. It's nice and flush, and that's what we want. So because my countersink was very close to this jaw, for the next three, well, the one screw, the, eight, the 832, I don't have to worry about that, but for the 1224 screws, I'll actually crank the table that way so that my center punch mark, and I'll actually probably center take the, the center punch and then angle it to try to push that center punch mark closer this way towards the middle of the material a little bit more. So our four countersunk holes are done and our well, three of the screws are ready to be deployed. The fourth one, like I said, the Allen key is at, at my house, so can't do that one just yet, but I can try these out. All right, and these look good. Nice and flush on the top side. The only thing is, since these are the only countersunk screws I could find, these two are a little long, so I'll have to cut those ends off, or I could grab the piece like this, tighten it up, and I can mill them off. I'll just have to take them back out and de uh, put a little chamfer on the end of them once I cut them off. Other than that, it's looking good. We can go on to the next phase of the project. So these quarter inch bolts have served their purpose, and I no longer need no longer need the four holes of the dead space area because now I have these three countersunk screws which which will end up being part of the completed piece. I now have them holding together my two pieces so without these bolts, quarter inch bolts, sticking out of the piece and not allowing me to have it sit flat on the one side, with those gone I can now have them put the both pieces in bolted together and it sits flat, clamp it up with a vise and I will take an end mill and I'll machine off the ends of these screws. So for the, before I do the last cut, I'll actually touch, without the ML running, I'll actually touch it to the material, lock the quill, and I'll re lower the table down two thousandths of an inch, so the end mill will be right above the material, but won't dig into it. That's looking great. So we'll do go ahead and do the other one. And these screws are brass, so that's why it was easy to machine it with the end mill with no issues. And running my finger and my nail over the brass screw and the aluminum piece, it feels flush. So I got it right on the money. Perfect. So the two pieces together have a combined thickness of just over 326 thousandths of an inch. So we will take note of that as we prepare for our last final four drilled and tapped holes. So the intent here for the next step in the project is I'll have four of these brass hexes and they'll have a through hole and I'll have these 1024 screws that will go through the brass hex and they will thread into my four pieces once they're all cut up. So my drill and tap hole here will be centered up this way and this way. So hence, I'll have to take a measurement here and I already have the thickness, that 326 thousandths. So we'll go off of that. So I took out the half inch parallels and with my piece upside down, I'll load it up in the vise on the two, on the two uh, remaining inch and three eight parallels. And tighten her up.
as you can see, we had a change of plans. I had to take the 3 16 end mill and just do four holes, plunging down about 5 16 of an inch deep so that I don't go into my eighth inch slots. I don't want to punch into those. So I'm just above those. So there's about a 16 of an inch between the bottom of these holes and those eighth inch slots. And so what I'm going to do is I'll take those brass hex pieces and I'll bore through the center of those and do a counter bore and I'll make a piece that will go through the brass piece and then press into these holes. Press fit. That's what we'll go with because as I try to tap through this first hole, it started to spread the two um, pieces of aluminum slightly apart and it just wouldn't work and then I ripped the threads out of it because it's just aluminum with a tap. So that wasn't going to work so we went to plan B. Okay, we're going for it. We're going for the saw cut, so we have it set up. And because we can only clamp so much, because we need the piece to stick way out, so we can cut our piece off into fourths, I found some other material that I is about a quarter of an inch thick when stacked together vertically. But you wanna make sure if you do stack material like that, if it's close to your size, you need to check once you tighten the vise that the piece you're actually trying to cut is, is not loose. Because sometimes you know, the piece you stack up on the other side of the vise to even up the vise for even clamping force could actually be slightly bigger than your piece by a couple, 10, 10 or so thousandths of an inch. And your piece will be loose and then the cut will go badly. So it's nice and tight, so we'll get to cutting. Hopefully the saw mark is lined up as close as it can be to my scribe mark. I'll put a Sharpie mark over the scribe mark so that I could actually see it when trying to line it up. And here goes nothing. Well, actually, let me kick the speed down. That's probably a good idea. All right, wish me luck. going to be pretty good, pretty darn good, because this side's a close side with the rounded slot ending before it gets to the end, and this side will open up with the eighth, eighth inch end mill, and then we got two bolts holding it in, so this piece was a success. Now, the next piece, I can stick this piece out another inch and five sixteenths, but I'm going to run out of room for the last two to split the last two in half because as you can see the this vice jaw ends right here so I can only cut one more in this uh, bandsaw I'll have to go over to the vertical bandsaw and do the last cut split the last two in half like that so for cut number two it's nice and tight we're lined up but as you can see I'm only grabbing on this much of my aluminum pieces maybe three quarters of an inch, maybe seven eighths of an inch at most. So that's why I can only do one more cut here on the horizontal bandsaw. Go for cut number two. <laughs> You saw the blade was super close to the bolt and the washers, but it just, just barely cleared. Just barely didn't cut into the bolt or the, or the flats. So that's why I couldn't use the other, the other two bolts because those flats were, were, were wider. So the saw would have cut into those and I just didn't want to have any issues. So we use these ones with the smaller flats for clearance and not a whole lot 
of clearance, as you can see. And that concludes part five. See you all in part six. Hopefully this only takes another, well, we'll, we'll finish it in part seven. How about that? I need these for my upcoming trip to take with me. See you in part, part six.